Coming up in this video, we get sent into the barrier and two people forget to turn at the chicane on the penultimate lap. Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Positions for Practice. For our first phase of the video, we are starting in 4th. Okay, let's go. Excited for this one, this is the furthest up the grid we've started. If you watched episode 1, you'd know that turn 1 on Watkins Glen is not my best corner, as we seem to take it differently every time we do it. This meant that Apollo 6 behind us had a run and we lost a position straight away. Not the best turn 1, but that's fine. Coming up to the end of lap 1 and Apollo 6 gets stuck behind the person in front of him giving us a bit of a run on the inside. Oh, that might be a penalty. Didn't realise he was giving me room. Okay, we're good. Cut him off there, but he's probably going to get us on the straight. It seemed that he gave us room on turn one, but for the chicane, he didn't want to leave us any room at all. Forcing us a little bit wide and allowing him to regain the position. <sighs> for God's sake. At the start of lap three, someone in front of us boxed, so that allowed us to gain another position. But then it seems here, the leader has a massive incident and forgets to break, as we're about to see here. This mistake drops him down out of the podium spots and it actually puts him in about 7th place. Coming up to the end of lap 6 now and the person in 2nd place, Apollo 6, decides he's going to box so we manage to jump another spot there. And one lap later, we decide that it's now our turn to box. So let's see where we come out after we finish our pit stop. So we do come out in sixth place, however, we've got someone behind us who is gaining on us quite rapidly and we just decide to let him go. After we let him go, we decided to follow his line into the chicane and ended up really close to giving us a penalty. As we are about to start lap 11, we have Sapix behind us who has gained about a second on us over the, the, over the previous lap. And unfortunately for us, he makes a mistake going into the first corner, giving himself a penalty. And as we ride on board with him, we can see that he completely misjudges turn one, earning himself a half a second penalty. And on the same lap, he also makes a mess of the chicane, giving himself a, another second for track limits. After he's served these penalties, it then gives us a very comfortable gap of about five seconds as we set our new fastest lap of the race. And on the penultimate lap of the race, someone else has a nightmare at the chicane and ends up going wide. At the time, I only thought this was one place. However, after looking at the replays, it turns out it was two. So we'll ride on board with the first person to spin out, Pulmonia. 
who overtook us after we boxed. And it seems that he just got the entrance to the chicane all wrong. And then is soon joined by Apollo. Now let's ride on board with Apollo and see what happened with him. The only thing that I can think of is that he was focusing on Pulmonia in front of him, which led to the, his mistake. After those two free overtakes at the chicane, as we're about to start our final lap, we have two people in front of us that are boxing, so this now puts us on a podium. And as we cross the line, we finish in third place, which is our highest place to finish yet. Good finish to the race. And as we get started with our final race of the video, we are starting in sixth place. And for this race, we decide to change it up a little bit and start in the Lamborghini Huracan. Now, if you watched episode one or you've watched any of this video so far, you'll know that turn one is not my best corner and it is the same story here. We end up making a mistake and bumping into Calper in front, fortunately sending him to the back of the pack. And this also leads to us getting absolutely swallowed up by four cars behind us. As we have front and rear damage, this really limits the top speed we can get leading up to the chicane. So it means that we're also going to lose another place to Yoda. As we've lost quite a few places already, we decide that the best thing to do is to just box, come out into clean air and essentially restart our race from here. At the end of lap two, three people in front have decided that it's now their turn to box. So we do manage to jump two of them. But we do come out really close to the third one in front and we do end up having a very good battle with him throughout this race. As we're coming to the end of lap five, this is where our race changes dramatically as Frank in front of us is going really slow after contact from Black Python in front and decides to let a few cars go in front but unfortunately decides that we are the one that he's going to make contact with. I have no words for what just happened. So watching it back from Frank's perspective, he's going quite slow around the last corner and gets a bump from Black Python, which then sends him into the wall and decides that one too many cars have passed him. And shortly after this occurred, Frank decided to leave the race. On to lap eight now, and as we've just gone around the chicane, Mossy has gone extremely wide. This is gonna be an easy pass as he has a penalty. We also have Galgir in front who has a penalty as well. So we, as he's going slower we decide to send it on the inside in a hopes to send him round the outside so he goes wide and picks up a penalty but this isn't the case. Now this is the start of a seven lap battle with Galgu in a battle for position. As we pull out to look to send a move into turn one, but decide it's not worth it.
and at the start of lap 10 we are looking to make up another spot on Wiz who has just come out of the pits and it looks like he has got himself a 3 second penalty he doesn't fight it too much I think if he hadn't got this penalty he would have fought us a little bit harder Coming up to the end of lap 13 now and we make up another place on Teddy who has just boxed. <coughs> About halfway through lap 14 just after the chicane Gaogu went wide so this opens the door for potential overtake leading up to the last lap. Like the last lap, we are tucking ourselves in behind Galgu, looking to get as close as possible using the slipstream. Again, we have a look on the outside just to see if there's any move, but there's not. Give him a bit of a tap just to let him know that we're there. And we're going to position ourselves on the inside of turn two, as this will give us the inside line for turn four. And this allowed us to be more defensive leading up to the chicane. After watching this back, I realised that he was flashing his lights us, whether this was an admiration for good racing or whether he was angry of how the overtake occurred, I don't know. After being behind him for about seven laps, we finally got the overtake done and we managed to make it stick, bringing us home in fourth position. If that incident with Frank wouldn't have happened, I imagine we probably would have finished third, but it's difficult to tell. If it hadn't have been for that incident, that probably would have been a podium. Well, I think that's a good time to end the Watkins Glen short course races there. The next time we do some races, it will be on the new set of daily races, which will be tomorrow as of time recording. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.